Hello and welcome to week 38 of this 52-week series for the Web Pro on what every web administrator needs to know to be successful in this space. My name is Scott Forsyth. In the last few weeks, we've been talking about web farms, uh, both for scalability and for high availability. And we've been talking about ARR in the last few weeks as well. And so today I want to talk about how do we make sure that ARR itself remains highly available. We want to make sure that if a single node fails, that your web farm continues to work and there doesn't become a single point of failure. So we have a few options, and one option up front is just use a hardware load balancer. If you already have a hardware load balancer in place, you trust it, you know it, then you can actually front the two, a pair or more ARR servers with hardware load balancers, and of course you make sure that they're highly available. And now you may ask why I have a hardware load balancer and ARR. Why don't you just use a hardware load balancer? And that's a valid question. If you have a good hardware load balancer, you may not need ARR. Uh, but ARR still brings a lot to the table. It's very easy to manage. It's easy. You can delegate it to different departments or different customers, and they can then manage turn on and off nodes rather than using the hardware load balancer. It's great to program against. Of course, you have URL rewrite, a lot of flexibility. There's a lot of things that ARR brings to the table. So if you are using ARR but also have a hardware load balancer, you could use the two together. And HA Proxy, for example, is another software load balancer that can also be used to front it if you want to. And in the same category, if your firewall supports a load balancer, you may be able to use that as well. And you can just front the ARR nodes with your firewall. Now understand you may need an IP per VIP per server, so there's some management to, to keep track of, but you'll know that. If you're already using a firewall of some sort on your end, you know how to set that up. The other option you have is, well, Microsoft offers a couple other options as well. As one is Microsoft Network Load Balancing, NLB, and then also Clustering Services. Now, so Clustering Services is an interesting one, and actually at Orcs Web, we've just implemented our first ARR solution using Clustering Services. We decided we're going to try this out on a particular one, and it looks good so far. And one of the reasons is just the built-in health checks, and to actually maintain that status is fairly easy out of the box to do. And so we're just trying it. Also, we don't have to do any static Mac to ARP mappings on the Cisco switches with the clustering services. And so that's why we're trying that. Uh, but NLB, we actually have multiple NLB ARR sets as well. That's actually what I want to cover today is we'll walk through how to set up NLB. Because if you're looking for an inexpensive solution that works well with ARR, NLB actually works really well. Now there are some drawbacks or considerations with NLB to consider. Um, one is if you have some of the Cisco switches, for example the 4500 series and the 6500 series, require that you have static map to ARP mappings set on the server. So every VIP, new VIP you have to add, you have to go to your network team and get them to add that. Uh, it's not going to be a problem in today's demo because we don't have, we're not bound directly to the Cisco switches. So some switches don't have that problem. It's just the extra smarts in the Cisco switches actually clashes a bit with NLB. And I'll show you, there's actually here in this link, uh, there's this top link here, there's some detailed information about this and I'll cover this shortly. Uh, another potential issue with NLB is there's no built-in health testing at all. It just, it's either on or off. It's kind of up to you to switch back and forth unless the entire server fails then the other node will pick up, but if a website fails, there's nothing built in to handle that. But I'll cover that as well. Uh, these two links here, and I'll show these sh shortly, have some health monitoring that you can set up. It's a little bit of extra work, but it is possible to do it and to automatically fail back and forth if your ARR nodes were to fail. So your mileage va may vary. You're going to have to decide what works best in your situation. And so what I'm going to show today is one option. It's not necessarily the best option for you. It depends on your situation. But NLB uh, does work, and it's fully supported. Microsoft recommends it in various different ways for ARR. And so it's a fully viable solution, even though it seems kind of simple. It's free. It's included. It actually works well. Now let me explain a little bit about how NLB works. If you picture ARR, for example, or a hardware load balancer, you have the load balancers that sit up front of the actual web nodes, and it distributes the traffic to all the various nodes. NLB doesn't work that way. It's actually a peer-to-peer -peer solution, and the actual NLB is installed, in this case, on the ARR nodes themselves, and then NLB it messes with the MAC and the ARP records, with the MAC address really, on the switches themselves and on your network switches. And so what it does is it fools it into obtaining the request, all the traffic comes in to all NLB nodes, and then they just kind of talk within themselves and say, okay, NLB 2, you're going to take this request, NLB 1, you take this request. And you can also do with a, a preference where one takes all the traffic and then the others wait until the other one fails before it takes the traffic. So this means that we're going to install the software right on the ARR nodes 
to be able to do this. So let's get started and let me show you how to actually do it. Let's, let's walk through to see how this is. And so if NLB interests you, this, is, this next part is for you. So what I've done is I've used just a couple VastNet machines and these are brand new. I haven't touched anything at all in them. This is ARR01 and ARR02. They look the same here, but you can see the name changed here in the corner. And so what I'm going to do is first thing we want to do is go to server manager on the two servers and I'll go to the other one here. Get that starting. Okay, and so once that loads, we can go to features. Network load balancing is a feature, not a role. And I'm going to click on features again here. It jumped out of place once it finished loading. So hit add features and select network load balancing and hit next install. It's that easy. It's actually a very fast install. And I'll do it here on the other node. Okay, so back here in ARR01, it's been installed. And so now in administrative tools, we have Network Load Balancing Manager. And so to set up our first cluster, it's really straightforward. We just right click, we say new cluster, and you can use this one here, I'll just say localhost, and it detects the server here with its primary IP. So we'll hit next, and we're going to make this the top priority. We'll make it one, and it gives the primary IP to bound, bind to, and this is good. And so we'll hit next. Now these are the cluster IPs. These are the virtual IPs that will float back and forth. So we're going to add some in here. And what I am doing here is you need to go with your network team. That could be yourself as well, of course. And find some IPs that you're going to use. And so what I'm going to use here is, how about 255, 255, 255, 0. So 10, 241, 10, 10. And let's add a second one as well. And 10, 40, 1, 10, 11. So now we have two IPs. You can add as many as you need to. And we'll hit next. And so now you have a choice here. And this full internet name, uh, I don't use it for anything. This is the network address that it's going to use. And this is kind of the primary floating IP for the cluster configuration. Now you have three options. And this is kind of an interesting discussion as to exactly which one that you want to use. Unicast is the default, and it's one of the oldest because it's the most compatible, but it's not necessarily your best one. And it causes ARP flooding on your network switch, so you want to definitely either VLAN off or put a hub up front, or better yet, avoid it if you can. Uh, the other option is multicast and, and, and IGMP multicast, and you just need to look. Uh, of course, it mentions this, you know, there's some help with some more details. So you might need to work with your, your network team. So in the Cisco, for example, uh, the IGMP multicast works well. So we're going to select this, and you may need to research this a little bit more for some more details for your environment. And so now what happens is the port rules, and this defaults to letting everything through, and this is fine with me. I like doing this, and then I use the Windows firewall to block everything else coming in. But if you wanted, you could actually specify that this is just port 80, and you do another one for 443, for example. So now we finish that, and our cluster has been set up with one node, and there should be a, a virtual IP. Now what's going to happen is we lose network connectivity for a good number of seconds, but then it will come back. So we'll just wait for that. Okay. Now we have the one node. We just need to add a second node to it. So we're going to add host to cluster. I just right-clicked, add host to cluster. Let's go to the other node, ARR02, and let's go IP config. And grab that IP address. We could use the host name too if you have an environment that works with the NetBIOS there. So paste that, connect. Sometimes this takes just a little bit. Okay, and it finds it. And you also want to make sure, of course, that your firewall is open for this if needed, and depending on what your firewall policies are. So we'll hit, hit Next. Notice this is number two, and NOB supports up to 32 nodes in a cluster. And so we'll uh, select this. The, the defaults are good here. You want it to start in the started state. And potentially with both either of these nodes when you add them, you could have done retain suspension 
after the computer restarts. So if you suspend it before restart, you want it to remain suspended afterwards, you can check that if you want to. And same thing, which ports are just going to allow through. So we're going to say finish. And we wait for it to converge. Now the other node is going to lose network connectivity a little bit while it does some adjusting on the network there. Again, if you're on a Cisco switch, there's some other configuration that you're going to have to do on the switch itself, and I'll cover that shortly. And notice it's pending. And I'll, re I'll remove some of the white space, some of the weights that I'm doing in this video. So it's not quite as fast as this video shows. Uh, sometimes I'm waiting here for a few seconds in the background. Okay, so it's fully converged now. And you can see there's a dedicated IP. And you can actually, using multicast, not unicast, but using multicast, you can connect to either of these IPs directly. And it remains on the node. But the virtual IP ones, in fact, if we go here to the cluster properties, and these two IPs, and more, of course, if you add them, those are the ones that float between the nodes as needed. And so you use the other ones for management, you use these ones for your actual load balancing. And so now this is set up. Now we can just do some testing and see how it works. So, of course, 10, 241, 10, 10, let's try it. So I've set up another web node. I've just called it error test, and I've added it to the same subnet uh, because I didn't use public IPs. You would actually, in fact, let me go back and, and talk about this one briefly more, you would put a real virtual IPs probably, unless you're using NATing or something else in your environment, or it's just internal. But just for testing, I've used some internal IPs. Okay, so we're going to go here, and if we go and visit it, 10, 241, 10, 10, let's say, and you can see it, it's working. Now what I want to do is let's change this so we can tell which node it's hitting. And these ones here, I've used vanilla builds, AR is not installed on this, and so in this case, there's no load balancing and there's no shared config. So I can do something that's unique per node. Uh, you can watch my previous videos if you want to show how to do this if it's already in shared config. Okay, so we go to the site and default website. This is on Air R01. And so what I'm going to do is let's just go to the default IS start. I'm just showing this simple. Of course, in the real world, you'll have a bit more stuff that you have to worry about. And let's just call this Air R01. We'll save this. And I'll do the same thing on Air R02. And so we'll go into IIS and just do the exact same thing. I, in fact, I, I can go directly to just C, init.pub, root, and we're going to go into this one here, and we'll do the same thing we did with the other one, except, of course, we're going to just say AR02. Okay, so now if we go to the test node and do a refresh, notice that we're on ARR01. And if we go here, there's some settings within NLB, that we can change regarding this. So let's go to the cluster properties and we go to the parameters. We'll go to the pork rules and we're going to edit this. And what we can do is rather than multiple host, we can actually say single host. And what this does is it will bind to a preferred one. I like to bind to ARR01 first because then I have the stats, the statistics. It's a little bit easier to troubleshoot. The logs are all in one server. I don't have to consolidate in between two servers. But again, it's up to you. You can use multiple hosts if you want. But I prefer this and then use the weight. So then what's going to happen is it will prefer the node that has the higher weight, which in this case is this first one here. So it's going to stay on 01. Right now we're waiting for it to converge to update itself. Okay, so that took a bit and actually it turns out I was just waiting. I could have done a F5 refresh and it would have actually shown a bit sooner, but I'll, I'll remove it from the tape so you don't have to wait as long as I waited. I probably waited about two minutes there. Okay, so now we can see they're converged, the updates have been done, everything should be in place. So if I go to our ARR test node and refresh, notice it's still on ARR01, which is kind of what it would have happened even if we didn't make the change. But let's go now and what we can do is let's say you want to do some maintenance on 01. Here's what you do. You just go to A01, um, right click, go to control hosts, and we can stop. Or you can drain stop first. It allows some of the requests to bleed out in a friendly way. And once you do that, I find I tend to wait forever on that. So I might leave drain stop for just a couple minutes and then switch to a stop. It's working away. I hit refresh. So we just watch the hourglass for a little bit. Uh, what we see is this time it did give us a failure. We're going to have certain situations where it doesn't complete in time. Usually it does complete in time. This time it didn't. And so there we go with error 2 Again, if you use a drain stop and wait for it, you're going to have a better response than if you just abruptly stop it there. But you can see there's some momentary failure. 
uh, but well, normally it's not too bad at all. And so now we're on ARRO2, and so now we've seen it in action. And so switch back here, what we see is this one here is now stopped, and this node is taking all the traffic. And this one is really our ARRO2 node is now going to be the live one. And when we're done, we can bring this back into rotation by starting it. And because of the priority, after it starts it, and then a little bit later, it's going to switch all the primary traffic back to this node here on its own. So as you can see, it's really pretty straightforward in terms of getting going. But let's now look at some other considerations, some things that you should be aware of. And I had shown these links before, and I'll include this here with my blog post as well, so that uh, for a reference, these are both very, all very handy. And so let's go through these one by one, and I think you'll find them very useful. So the first one here is Cisco themselves actually have a nice article about using Microsoft Network Load Balancing. And so they talk about it here, a bit of discussion. They talk about unicast mode and some nice theory on it and how it works with the MAC address, and then the multicast mode. Then they recommend two changes. This top one you do need to do, this ARP record. And so what you do is you're using the ARP, then you use the virtual IP. So in our case, we had two of them, 10, 241, 10, 10, and then 10, 11. So we'd add that along with the IP that we would find here in NOB. And so we can actually find that NOB going to our cluster properties. And this right here is, uh, did I say IP? I meant the MAC address is right here that we're going to use. So we would enter that. Now, this is interesting. Cisco recommends that we also add this because they say that it's supposed to be better for the CPU on the server. Uh, Jeff Graves, uh, also here at OrcsWeb, I did a bunch of research, great blog post on this here if you want to search for it, and I'll include it with the links. And he mentions that what, one, one of the things we ran into here is we had this in operation for a while, and then all of a sudden noticed that our Cisco switches were pegging the CPU, or not necessarily pegging, but they were very high. And so through a bunch of research, he was able to track it down to being from NOB. And it turned out that these were actually hurting rather than helping. And so once he dropped that, from the switches, it all worked out good. So, contrary to Cisco's article, just do this top part, the, ARP, uh, the IP to MAC address mapping. Don't do this one here, where you're binding to all the interfaces. It turns out that that actually hurts it. Now, another thing is you want your health monitoring. So here's another great article, and this is focused on NLB, and it does a bunch of things. You can check the status of the server, uh, actual web page, and then based on the response it gets, it's able to actually take nodes in and out of rotation. So I'll, I don't have enough time to cover it in depth, but you can take a look at this. And then also, here's another one that works really well with it, is this is clustering IS7, or you know 7.5 of course applies, uh, WW service for clustering, cluster failover. And it shows how to do the whole clustering failover if you want to set it up. And in addition to that, it has a really nice script that will try to start services if they fail and then respond accordingly. So what you may want to do using NLB is combine these two and they actually make a really powerful script. And that allows NLB to have full health tests. You don't necessarily have to watch a page because with AR, with ARR it is. Because you're using URL rewrite and it doesn't really use the site, you just need to make sure the site is started and the app pool is started. You don't have to necessarily watch the content within it. But to make sure that a node is properly taken out of rotation when it fails, you want to take a look at these. So there we have it, our NLB and the configuration for you. Again, don't forget this is only one of many possible options, but it's one that uh, I have used in production. We've been using here for uh, a while at OrxWeb in a few different clusters. It's worked, uh, or I shouldn't say clusters, web farms. It's worked great. And clustering services also works, and I know many people who have fronted ARR with hardware load balancers as well and got some great results as a result of that. So thanks for tuning in, and hope to see you again next week.